Eh, pueden eh, seleccionarlo para donde están uh, las opciones de juntas y ahí pueden seleccionar el idioma, ya sea inglés o español. Ok, if you can give me one moment and I will move the interpreters over. Un momento, nada más. And you're good to go, Grady. Right. And I'm going to kick it straight over to Dr. Brown and just make a note. Uh, Tamika, I believe that we also have um, school board chair Gibson or vice chair Gibson is in the attendee list. I think we might want to promote her to uh, the panel as well. And then with that, I'll kick it over to Dr. Brown to help kick us off. All right. Thank you, Grady. Um, good afternoon and welcome everyone to today's chat and chew session. My name is Erin Brown and I'm the Director of Family and Community Engagement at Richmond Public Schools. And as many of you know, uh, George Wythe has been on the docket to be rebuilt for many years now. It seems that we are finally about to realize that goal of having a new George Wythe High School. And it's really important to our Office of Engagement and our school division to make sure that the people who are most impacted by the building of a new school are able to provide their feedback. And so we started these community conversations last week. We started them in person. Um, it is spring break, but we're having virtual sessions all week so that we can really hear from our families, our students, our community members about this idea. Um, this is phase one of a multi-phase approach to building the school. And we're gonna get feedback along every part of this journey. And this very first phase, we're dreaming big. We're calling this with reimagined. And we really want to figure out using our passion for learning as our foundation, what would the theme of a new George with be? Could it be an art school, which we'll hear more, more about today, or a STEM or even a STEAM school? Um, so we are excited to have this conversation with you all this week. Also have some experts in the area of art talk about what their high school looks like. But before we turn it over to that portion of our meeting, I do want to recognize that we have a couple of school board members who are joined us today, and we're very excited to have them. Um, if you would like to share something, I think we have Ms. White and we have Ms. Gibson here. Please feel free to share a few words with our folks who are watching. I just want to say good afternoon to everyone, and uh, thank you for having me. And I'm here to hear about phase one also, um, whether it be a STEM program, art program, dance program, whatever you will want, I'm, I'm here to listen. So I'm just gonna be sitting back here listening and thank you all for being here. I know it's spring break. So uh, after you finish this, continue to uh, enjoy your spring break. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. White. Ms. Gibson, would you like to share a few words? Hi there, I'm here listening as well. Thank you for organizing this and uh, look, looking forward to, to finding out where, uh, where we go. Thank you. All right, so before we turn it over to our community experts who are here with us today, our partnership coordinator, Grady Hart, is going to share a little bit of background um, and get everyone kind of on the same page about what we're talking about when we say, this could be an art school or this could be a STEM school. So Grady's gonna lead a short reflection for us and then turn it over to our friends from LaGuardia. Grady. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Brown. So excited to have everybody here today with us. Thank you for taking time in your busy schedule and for some of you time during spring break to be here. Um, so as Dr. Brown mentioned, our current phase of community outreach regarding a new George Wythe is around the theme of the school. And so uh, it's important to just note that whether we ultimately choose or whether the community ultimately chooses a STEM theme, an arts theme, or some combination thereof, all students will still participate in all of the normal classes, right? So students will still take English, math, social studies, all of those classes in addition to hands-on coursework in STEM or arts or again, some combination thereof. 
Um, so just a couple of uh, housekeeping items for us today. Uh, for folks who are attending, uh, if you have any questions, please use that Q&A function that you'll see at the bottom of your screen. Um, and then if you want to shout out responses, so if our panelists or anyone else asks you questions and they want you to kind of shout them out, for that, feel free to use the chat function, which is right there in that main menu on Zoom as well. So their Q&A and chat are right next to each other. Um, so today, we are excited to be focusing explicitly on the arts pathway. That is the focus for today's session. Um, and so just to give a bit of an overview here, an arts-themed high school will focus on integrating some combination of visual arts, theater arts, and fine arts, such as dancing, singing, um, into the school. And again, students will still participate in all usual subject matter, but it will be an integrated approach with an arts focus. And so I want to begin by, in just a moment, I am going to drop a link in the chat that will take you to our, um, that will take you to the catalog. There we go. The catalog that has some examples of what an art school might look like. And so if you can take a look at beginning on page two, where you'll start to see some ideas for what an art school might look like, um, I'd like us to just take a little bit of time to think about what excites us about this pathway. What excites and interests us about an arts school? And then also, what are some things that you would like to see see in an art school that may not be captured in this catalog. And so really just thinking about what sounds interesting, in particular, what courses sound interesting to you. So you'll see some course listings in there. And just jot down some notes, some thoughts, any questions that you have. Just jot those down as you take a look and review them. And what we're going to do next is just give everyone a couple of minutes to do that and to really focus on reviewing the catalog, especially the arts section. So again, that link that I pasted in the chat is there. And then I'm also going to share my screen so that you can see it here if you are, uh, if that would be easier for you. And so for now, again, we're just going to take a couple of minutes and just take a look at the catalog. Just record your thoughts, your questions, and as you're going through it, feel free to add to the chat anything that excites you or interests you or any questions that you have when looking through the arts section of that catalog. So again, as you're looking through this, if there are any things that are jumping out to you, like any course descriptions or just key words that you see, go ahead and throw them in the chat. What are some things that stick out to you? What are some things that excite you or some things that you feel might be missing? And uh, Maria, as folks start throwing things in the chat, if you wouldn't mind just shouting them out, we'd love to hear some thoughts that folks have.
Okay, so uh, someone said they are excited about ceramics. Also, mu musicianship uh, sounds awesome. Uh, they say art school, will there be fine arts production at the end of the year? That is a great question. Um, I think if we do um, decide that arts is the theme we want to go with and our guests today are at a fine art school and they probably will tell you they do lots of productions. Um, so I do think if that's the theme, we certainly would um, have wonderful productions that our students would share with the community. Uh, someone said when they were in high school, they learned little art and uh, the person is thrilled so students, um, that the students have an opportunity to learn via the arts. All right. Thank you so much for folks who were able to add to the chat. Love already getting to hear some of your thoughts and the things that you're excited for, things that we would like to see added. That's what today is all about. We are here to really hear your thoughts. And so as we move into the next section here, um, today we are joined by the LaGuardia School of the Arts in New York City. And while George Wythe is a unique school and we are going to follow its own path as the community decides, Today is about getting an idea of what a school with an arts theme might look like. And so as we get ready to hand off to our partners at LaGuardia, I just want to share that um, these folks are going to take us on a tour of their school so that we can hear directly from some of their students and get an idea of what a day in the life of an arts high school student might look like. And so with that, I'm going to hand things off to Heather and uh, let you be the maestro for your team here today. Laura, well, great. Thanks so much. We're so excited uh, to be here and to be doing this. Um, so today you're going to hear from our fine arts studio and also our dance studio. Um, we have seniors from both of those studios who are going to tell you about their experience. Um, and I know that they have a lot to share. Um, so I'm just gonna pass it off to them. So our fine arts students, we have Adam Devayani and Navele, um, and they have a great presentation that they've put together. Oh yeah, guys, we're super excited. Thank you so much for having us. Um, I'm going to share screen and uh, Navele, do you wanna kick it off? Sure. Um, this is our fine arts program at LaGuardia High School, uh, and just a short introduction to an extensive fine arts program. Um, my name is Navele Lopescom, and we're excited to show you how our school works. Um, this is a short video that we had created. Um, it's basically a tour of our programs. And just let me know if the audio, like give me a thumbs up if the audio is working.
All right, so thought that we would start the presentation of Alaguardia with the audition process because there is an ext extensive audition process, and we felt that was a big part of your sort of introduction to the Laguardia community. Um, so, as a kid, I grew up always being surrounded by art, and I loved it, but I never felt like I was too good at it. Sometimes I felt discouraged seeing my peers and how much better they were, but you know, I still loved it, and I continued doing it, and. Late in middle school, one of my art teachers was like, Adam, you love art so much. Why not try to pursue it? Um, and she encouraged me to apply to LaGuardia, which is something I never even dreamed about doing. Um, and so she helped me put together a portfolio and we practiced for the audition. And I went through all the process and somehow I got in and I was super excited about it. I was like, I couldn't believe it. Um, and obviously right away I committed to it. I was like, this is awesome. And I got to LaGuardia and I really realized what makes this community so special. It's not necessarily the arts, but the people of LaGuardia who are all so like like-minded and share this really special interest um, in the arts. Um, yes, LaGuardia was my dream high school, I feel. Um, I had always loved art as a child. I attended many arts programs before learning about LaGuardia. Um, I heard about LaGuardia through my teachers in middle school who knew that I loved art. Um, it appealed for me for, to me for many reasons, the main being the community of having so many like-minded people. Um, so I applied for this middle school, high school boot camp for the arts, preparing me for the audition. And I got in, the moment I stepped into the building, the entire environment spoke to me. I felt like I belonged, like it was a reward, yeah. Um, hi everyone, I'm Devyani. I'm a senior fine arts major and I wasn't supposed to go to LaGuardia. I had moved to New York in January 2018 from India, so I'd already missed the main round of auditions for this school and everybody kind of told me that it would be impossible for me to get in because I didn't really have my portfolio like with me at that time and I only had a few weeks left to prepare a full portfolio, um, but I did art my entire life and I wasn't just going to give it up. So my entire summer for two months, I spent around four to five hours every day going to an art class and making a portfolio. Um, and my audition was great, but I didn't hear back from the Gaudia for a few weeks after. So I kind of just assumed I didn't get in. Um, and the next thing I knew, it was September 4th, 2018. It was the day before school starts in New York. And I was reading my summer reading book for my other high school that I kind of put off the entire summer because I was preparing for the Gaudia. Um, and then my mom got a phone call letting me know that I was offered a spot at LaGuardia. And I just remember how happy my family was. Uh, my parents moved to the US for my and my brother's education. Um, and getting to LaGuardia was like my first big significant accomplishment. And I'm really thankful that I ended up here because I wouldn't be who I am without the school. Um, I'm just going to quickly go over the LaGuardia Fine Arts course offerings because I think that was a huge part of why all of us picked LaGuardia. Um, so foundation, so in uh, ninth and 10th grade, you uh, do studio practice one, two, three, and four. It's basically foundation classes. It's where you get to explore all the different mediums from drawing to painting, ceramics, 3D mixed media. And then after you explore all the different mediums in grades 11th and 12th, you can pick a concentration. And there's a bunch of different studios from drawing to advanced painting to digital photography. Um, and so you basically start off with foundation level classes as um, an underclassman. And then when you're an upperclassman, you can pick a concentration because you've now had experience with all the mediums. General experience within the fine arts program. Um, so this school really throws you into the world of art and I couldn't be more grateful for it. We're required, as Davyani said, to take the foundation classes from graphite to acrylic paint, um, still lives and figure drawing. Um, and then we get to explore more deeply into the things that we love the most. Um, the most important thing we have in this school, I believe, are our art shows. So we have two semi-annuals, which happen after the end of each semester. Um, it basically like encompasses all of the work of the entire student body. Um, and then we have senior art shows, which are primarily for the seniors of the graduating class. Um, it showcases our growth from freshman to senior year. And then we have student curated art shows, which I believe is the biggest event of our school year um, in terms of uh, fine arts. Um, so it's completely driven by students. 
um, the entire team that we have is students. We curate the show, we organize the music, we do everything by ourselves um, with obviously the supervision of our uh, wonderful AP, Ms. Ha. Heather O'Connell. Um, so, and then we have trips to the museum, uh, museum reports. Freshman year and sophomore year, we are required to go to the museum and learn about the different arts, um, the traditional arts and like classical renaissance. And then there's a constant circulation of knowledge in the school. I believe that's the, a great highlight. Oh yeah. So as Novelli touched upon, um, thank you. Thank you. So as Navelli said, you really do get to explore so many different mediums at LaGuardia. Um, personally, in middle school, I was always super into acrylic painting um, and watercolor. So getting into LaGuardia and being able to pursue that was awesome. But you also get introduced into or to all these other mediums. So for example, my freshman year, we, we had this class that's called SP1 through 2. And we learned how to do two points of perspective, which you can see here to the right. So it's like a sort of architectural technique. And from that point, I was like, well, you know what? Architecture is really cool. Painting is also cool, but why not do both? So for the other couple of years, when, as Daviani said, you're able to really choose a concentration and follow it, I was able to go with architecture. Um, and then now even doing painting. So it's sort of like you really get to sort of follow your own path. Um, so just to go with some highlights for us. So all the way on the left, on the top, um, it's the dark room that we have. We have two dark rooms in the school. And I think that's insane. Like, I don't remember ever going to an art space and they had like a full dark room. So at least for me, that's the best part. Um, we have pictures of our art shows. We kind of go all out for the art shows. It's kind of like a reward for us. So we have like a photo booth and we play music and we have sketch artists. There. And we also have um, a newsletter. It's called News and Notes. It's um, we have student editors who send out this newsletter once a month. It's to keep the entire art department informed about opportunities and, you know, just things going on in the art department. Um, on the top right, that's the student art team that we have to curate the shows. Um, Adam Navelle and I are the student leader art curators for this year. And I think it's just been such an amazing opportunity and you get to meet so many different people and you gain a lot of leadership skills as well. Um, but yeah, these are some highlights for us. So sorry. So obviously, um, in this really diverse community, there are a lot of ways that it can impact you and you can really become your own individual. Um, so through the arts community at LaGuardia, um, I've been able to build so many special connections with both students and teachers and people from all over because we get all these guest speakers that come from all over the world um, to share this similar interest in the arts. Of course, though, it is the big school and not, you know, arts aren't the only thing here. We have amazing athletics programs. We have lots of interest in the sciences. Um, so you are able to pursue the arts while pursuing other things in your life, obviously. Um, and it is a big city, so you have a lot of community service opportunities that often do go along with the arts, which is really, really cool. Um, for example, speaking of things that do not necessarily correlate with art, um, during the pandemic lockdown, I was able to share my love for riddles and math problems um, through a club that's called Puzzle Society. And so through this like lonely time and people were back at home, you know, and there wasn't much to do, we were able to um, share this love for riddles and puzzles and stuff like that. So there is a lot that unites us. Um... Um, for me, I think one of the best parts of being at LaGuardia is um, being able to experiment with multiple different art forms. I think that you know, like growing up, I always took art as an elective, but that's all it was, it's an elective. You know, you don't have that many opportunities to like further your other interests in like the arts department because it is like really big. Um, and I think that like, you know, through the school, I've, because I was able to um, expose myself to all these different art forms, I can now say that I am an experienced artist, which is not like, not a lot of people get to do that. Um, and this school also introduced me and gave me a platform to explore my passion for photography, something I do aim to uh, study further in college. I also think that 
I've learned skills in the art department that helped me in my STEM classes. You know, like art and science, they aren't that far off the spectrum as people make them out to be. Um, so take photography, for example, when I'm developing a role of film, you have to check the temperature of the developer. You know, you have to calculate the amount of time that you have to put the film uh, in the developer so that it's not overexposed or underexposed. You're basically conducting an experiment. And then the skills I use here, I put in my science class as well. Um, and I am a science person, but I love just, I love art just as much as I love science. Um, and I've also gained a lot of leadership skills. I think when I moved from India, I was really closed off, but I started my own like project for the underclassmen in the arts department. That's how I met Ms. O'Connell. And then this year I became the student curator for the art shows. And you know, through this, I've been able to meet so many people with different backgrounds and unique point of views. And I've been inspired by their journey with art. And I hope to continue meeting such people in college. Um, without LaGuardia, I really wouldn't be the person I am today. It uh, showed me uh, things that I never knew that I would need in life. It's allowed me to blossom into the artist I've always wanted to be. I've dabbled into so many different forms of art and world lenses from ceramics to woodblock prints to animation. And, you know, I had to get out of my comfort zone. Uh, I discovered myself and, you know, now I'm continuing my journey to the School of Visual Arts here in New York City for a full ride BFA in animation. And you know, without this school, I really would not be able to do that. So, um, to wrap up, we just have a quote by a art student. My screen's glitching. Give me a minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, every day when I'm at my limit, I get to come to art class and do what I love. So, yeah, I think that's all of us can relate to that. But. That's the end of our presentation. Thank you guys for giving us an opportunity to uh, tell you our stories and we'll be here if you have any questions at the end. Thank you guys so much. That was so wonderful. Um, Grady, should I should I pass it over to Greg Sinecori? Okay, so yes, we now please. we have Greg Sinecori, uh, who's the assistant principal of our dance department. Um, and they're going to tell us a little bit about the dance studio. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for having us. Um, I'm joined here today by three of our senior dance majors. We have John Ledwith, Kai McCoy, and Cayenne Charles-Pierre. And we're going to talk a little bit about our program, and then they're going to dance a little bit for you. So welcome. So John, what is it like going to an arts high school? Hello. It's so lovely to see you. Uh, meet you all and talk to you all. Um, so yeah, so um, I sort of um, grew up in like a small little suburb, um, uh, sort of uh, in uh, in uh, Staten Island, New York. Um, and the school that I went to was sort of a lot of the kids there weren't really open to uh, the idea of, of like a male dancer or 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 like a male in the arts. So I sort of felt like extremely stigmatized for a while, and it was um, it was a problem. And I just sort of knew that I needed to get out of a uh, community like that and I wanted to sort of be in a community where um, my love for my art form was sort of cherished and celebrated and appreciated. So um, my mother actually attended LaGuardia High School. She graduated in um, 1996 and she just she knew that this would sort of be the place for me because she was involved in, in this community. And so um, I was sort of reluctant at first because it was going to be like a long commute for me and um, a long day for me. But when I came to the school for my audition, I fell in love. I fell in love with the kids, I fell in love with the staff. I, I just, I loved everything that I was seeing and I knew that this was the uh, place for me. So um, when I attended LaGuardia, it was exactly what I thought it would be. Um, I felt embraced, I felt seen, I felt heard, and it was something that I was sort of not not used to. And I felt that I could sort of study my, my art form without judgment um, and with encouragement. And I felt that that was a gift that um, LaGuardia gave me. Um, so in terms of like the uh, curriculum here at LaGuardia, um, so as a freshman, I came in, you take ballet all four years of high school, um, which is sort of crucial to um, understanding technique. Um, and, you know, technique sort of creates the basis for, for everything. So uh, that's uh, very important to have that like core structure. And then I, we, we study um, gram technique, which is a uh, modern dance form. Then sophomore year, um, you're offered a little bit more, so um, we start taking improvisation class, um, and also we study the limon technique, which sort of offers another lens um, into 
another lens or idea into um, how, how to move your body. Um, and then junior year, you um, begin to study Horton technique. Um, it gets a little more fun and you start studying um, musical theater, tap, um, choreography, which gives um, students a chance to sort of express their own personal creative voice, which is great. And then senior year, you actually, you get to perform the work that you've sort of been working on for all this time. And it's really rewarding. So we have the senior showcase um, in the winter, and then we have the senior dance concert, which uh, we learn repertoire from uh, six, six choreographers and perform it in our concert hall. So um, it's, it's really rewarding to sort of get to put all that hard work into a performance. And it's really, um, it's a really great experience. So yeah, going to LaGuardia has been amazing and um, I wouldn't trade my experience for the world. Thank you so much, John. Cayenne, what is it like to be offered this type of dance training as part of your high school curriculum? If you can take us through a little bit of what the day in the life of a dance major here at LaGuardia looks like. Well, about what John had explained previously before, um, freshman and sophomores, you kind of take the same ballet, Graham, Lamone, and then senior year and junior year, you get more, but as a freshman, you dance in the morning for the first four periods of the day, well, starting second to fifth. And those are just sort of like, I don't know, I always saw it as like a great day, to a great way to start my day and a great warm up. And then junior, senior year, looking forward to the end of the day, doing something that I love to do and getting the training here from teachers who've had their experiences in the professional world and learning from them. It's definitely something that we all take advantage of. And it's, it's really, really great sort of getting that training constantly, year after year, day after day, week, week month after month, and sort of having that repetition and learning that you can grow within yourself and grow in an environment that allows for growth is really beneficial. What does your day look like with uh, balancing your academics and your dance classes, Kayan? What kind of academics uh, do you take now and what did you take uh, prior to senior year? Well, freshman year, my first period class was English and second in sophomore year, my first period was um, geometry. And then after my first period class, I got up to the eighth floor and then you have ballet and then your modern technique. But now senior year, I have my first four academic classes and then I have lunch fifth. And then from sixth period to 10th period, we have our classes, but now that we're preparing for the concert in June, my second part of my dance block or into the day after school is filled with rehearsals for the concert that are going really well. Great. Kayan, out of all the academic courses you take, um, or that you've had through these four years. What is your favorite, what is your favorite course outside of dance and why? English would have to be my favorite, favorite course, only because I love, I like to read and the books that we read at LaGuardia and the books that are given, that's given us to read are really well, good as well. And as you get into your senior year, you get to take elective classes. And this year I'm taking creative writing. And I also like to write a lot. And then in creative writing, it's write like short, short stories and more things. And now we're writing poems, it's poetry month. So learning to write and explore, it's really fun. Last question, Cayenne. How do you balance your day? So you have dance for half the day and academics for half the day. How do you find and strike that balance between the workload of what's required for your studio and what's required uh, in your academic courses? For me personally, it was hard to first adjust because I came from a private school, which was a lot smaller, a shorter day, and then transitioning to LaGuardia with a longer schedule and a lot more of a demanding day. I definitely had to find a schedule that worked for myself starting freshman year, and LaGuardia is also good with making sure each student finds their own schedule and find what's what works for them. Time, man time management is also really important, but managing schoolwork and dance is pretty hard because you're, I'm always so tired at the end of the day because dance was so much and then I have, now have to go home and do my work, but just making sure that I have time to do all of it so I'm not like staying up or wasting time. I'm making sure I'm getting all of it done so I have time to breathe and I have time to like take care of myself. Thank you so much, Cayenne. We have a question here for Kai McCoy. What are some things that make the community at LaGuardia unique as compared to a non-arts high school? 
one thing that's really great about LaGuardia is that everyone's there for their art. And I think that's something that really binds the community together because I could go to like a normal high school and then take dance after class. But I feel like that would always be something that separated me from everyone because I have different interests from them. And there's like something I'm really passionate about outside of that. So I think if everyone has the same passion, there's something that really binds us all together and creates a tighter community. Great. What have you learned from the other disciplines here at LaGuardia outside of dance? Because um, we, we do share a floor with the art department. And then we also have the drama department, the tech theater department, the instrumental music department, and the vocal department. What have you learned by being an environment with other art disciplines and other students your age doing their art in uh, different genres? Well, it's always great to go to the other shows and even just to walk around the eighth floor and see the art in the hallway is like, there's always some creativity and something inspiring that you have to look at. Thank you so much. So the dancers are gonna do a little improv for you. This is one of our, our dance studios um, that we also use as a black box theater um, and enjoy. Hey, thank you so much, dancers, and thank you so much for having us this afternoon. So someone wants to know the title of the music that the dancers are doing. It is called A Gape by Nicholas Bertrell from If Neil Street Could Talk. Thank you so much. Well, thank you all so much. This was, uh, I, I already had high expectations, but this just blew them out of the water. Um, this was amazing, you all. And I think for everyone who is here in the meeting, um, you know, that really gave us an opportunity to see what uh, being an art student in an arts high school might look like. And it just, it, it did such a good job. You all did so wonderful. Um, 
not just showing us what the day to day might look like and what you know what things might look like, but seeing your students, seeing you all, you young leaders, really show us precisely what it's like for you and what this journey to get you here has been like. Um, it really was amazing. And at this point, I would love to open up to uh, folks in attendance here. If any of our panelists would like to ask any questions, um, and then certainly anybody uh, in our attendees, if you would like to ask questions, you can do them either in the Q&A and we will read them and respond as they come up. Or if you would like to ask your question directly, feel free to use the raise hand function. You'll see that again down at the bottom of your screen and I will allow you to talk. I will unmute you. So um, let's go ahead and open up for questions. I think we have one more here that Maria will ask for us. Okay, so um, it says thank you for uh, presenting. So amazing. How long did you study your craft before applying and getting into LaGuardia? How competitive is it? So I can answer that question. I'm UJ Maxim Kelly, I'm the principal. Um, that's a really great question. So for us, we are interested in students who have a passion, a love for arts. We're not looking for students who necessarily have had prior training. So while we do have students, some of them share that they've been doing art their whole life. We also have students who haven't had opportunity to receive training prior and we're looking for their talent and their passion. So we really like, it, it's really wonderful when students come together and they bring to get, bring their different backgrounds and different reasons why they're passionate in the art. Um, every year we have about, so this year we have over, 5,500 students applying, and we have uh, a couple hundred spots. Wow. Thank you very much, UJ. And I see uh, a couple of comments that I'll read from the chat as well. Uh, Jennifer Maddox, one of our wonderful arts partners for RPS, um, says that arts equals acceptance and finding your place is the message that I've heard from dancers. And I agree wholeheartedly. That was very clear in that presentation. Um, I also see a question from, um, let's see, someone here that says, when WIF is opened, what percentage of the school will be for the arts? And uh, Dr. Brown, can I ask you to take that question? Sure. Um, that is a great question. Um, during this phase one, we're really exploring our options. And so, you know, hearing from our LaGuardia students, um, and I was geeked out because I'll show my age, I'm thinking Fame and Debbie Allen. So I was super excited um, to hear from the students. Um, whether we decide on arts or STEM, that is actually going to be a community decision. You know, we really want all the feedback we can get. Um, but the goal is that the whole school would have that theme um, and that we want this to be a school um, that, you know, while LaGuardia, the competitive that, you know, works for that community, for our community, we want this to be a community-based school in the South Side, um, George Wish, and that students who are zoned and live in the surrounding neighborhood will come to this school. And obviously, if there are students who are very passionate about arts or STEM, whatever the theme is, there would be opportunities for them to also um, go to that school as well. But the whole school would be themed and we want it to be for students who are zoned for that particular school. So we have another question. Um, it says, is WIF still going to be public school or will it become a private one? It is still going to be a public school, 100% public school. Um, free, as I said, um, for our students who live in that community. And I think I, I'll, um, you know, briefly mention one of the students that spoke earlier talked about getting prepared. Um, we definitely don't want to set our students up for failure and get into this new theme or program and it seems very unattainable or difficult. And so we're already having conversations right now about, you know, what does middle school look like? for our Richmond Public School students who, you know, would want to go to this high school, how do we prepare them 
in sixth, seventh, eighth grade for the experiences that they would have so that they can be successful. So we haven't worked out all of those things and haven't gotten that into the weeds, but that is, is on our mind. How do we prepare our students to be successful in high school and set them up for that? Thank you, Dr. Brown. And I'm going to broaden the, the questions that we're asking folks to respond to as I see more things rolling into the chat and just start to kind of point us towards thinking about what this would look like for George with. And I think that last question was a really good way of starting to lead us in that direction. Um, and so as we think about George with, uh, you know, what are some of the things that have you found the most interesting today? What do you feel might be the best pathway for George with? Is this uh, you know, if you were already arts, is this reinforcing it? If you had maybe been leaning STEM, are you now thinking maybe arts or do you still feel that STEM would be strong? And so again, please continue to put your questions in the chat as you think about that um, and, uh, and or raise your hand and I will unmute you. Um, and then I'm also just going to share, uh, Jennifer had another comment along these lines that said it would be wonderful to see an opportunity for students to be immersed in the arts and RPS. RPS already has a strong fine arts program and having a focused school would be that much more impactful. So I, I would consider Jennifer as a, definitely a strong vote for a school for the arts. Um, and then I'm just going to read out a couple more comments that have come in. Again, please let us know if you have questions as well. Um, and so someone said, if some students are not interested in arts or STEM, where will they be assigned for education if they live in that zone? That's a really good question. I'm going to repeat it, and then I'm going to kick it to Dr. Brown to respond. So if some students are not interested in arts or STEM, and they are zoned for George with, where will they be assigned? Really good question. Um, we haven't worked out all of those you know, logistics at this point. We certainly don't wanna force students um, to go to a school that you know, is not a good fit. Um, so in the same vein that we're talking about, you know, what could George with be, um, you're going to start hearing about conversations soon about our Richmond Technical Center. Um, and what can we do to make that a program that um, fits the needs of our students. So um, don't have all the details, but are definitely keeping in mind that this is not a one size fits all. And while most students, we've talked to our students. So I love in this presentation that we're hearing from actual students. We spent all last week at George Witt High School talking to um, students. We're also going to talk to our middle schoolers who will go to this new high school um, to get their feedback. Right now, it's a 50-50 split <laughs> between arts and STEM. So we're going back in to kind of figure out even more um, how can we do this. And we're hearing that STEAM could also be um, that compromise that integrates both. Um, so we definitely want to make sure that we figure out options for all students, but haven't worked out the details just yet. And I'm going to kick it to Maria to ask the question in the chat, but as I do that, or the question in the Q&A rather, as I do that, I am adding to the chat right now, and um, this is an online survey. And it is about a five minute survey. We would love for everyone here to please go ahead and open that. And while we're sitting here before we close out in a few minutes, uh, if you could take the time to fill out that survey, all of those responses are being compiled and will be ultimately turned over to our uh, school board members, including uh, Ms. Gibson and Ms. White, who are here with us today, so that they can really be sure that they're making an informed decision that is aligned to what our community is asking for. So please fill out that survey. If you have folks in your network who are not able to make it today, please share that survey with them as well. And then we'll share additional resources before we close out. But for right now, if you all could actually pull that up and begin filling that out as we take additional questions, we would love to make sure that we get your feedback. With that, Maria, I see a couple of questions in that Q&A, so I'll kick it over to you. Okay, so the first question I see says, how will you have a total art-based high school where kids don't apply? LaGuardia is able to achieve, achieve the level because of the competitive nature of the school. 
another great um, question slash comment. I think for us, you know, we're thinking about how do we provide this um, opportunity and exposure to all of our students. Um, again, the details haven't been worked out in terms of, you know, will there be an application process? Um, what does it mean if you live in the school zone? But for now, we really want to focus on this being very accessible to all of our RPS students who want this opportunity. So as we, you know, continue with the phases, we'll continue to get community feedback about what that looks like um, and how do we make sure that all students are able to access it, even if there is an application process, what are we doing to make that application process equitable? You know, so I, I just want to keep that framework that really when we're talking about this school, we're talking about equity and we're talking about access in each of those stages. And so we would work with community partners and community members um, like those of you today to make sure that that is embedded into the process. Thank you, Erin. Um, another question is, do you have to choose one or the other, or can you put them together, art and STEM? Well, several times, um, and when we've had these community conversations, organically STEAM has come up, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. Um, and so this idea that possibly seen could be the venue that allows us to um, integrate the arts um, into STEM. Um, so that has been something that many people have advocated for. And we'll just continue to have these conversations um, to figure out what, you know, the theme will look like or if it will be integrated, as some people have suggested. And as we start to wind down on time here, I am going to read several comments together and then it's uh, one of them is a question, but we've had several people very active in the chat with some good thoughts. Um, and so we have one that said, uh, being that we have two STEM focused middle schools, I think it would be great to offer the arts to students who do not have access to those opportunities. Um, that person also said it may be time for Richmond to let go of zones and make all of our schools magnet schools. I think this would provide better learning environments and diverse spaces for our students. And then uh, Dr. Brown, I'm going to kick one more question to you and then I'm going to close us out after that. Uh, but could it, well, let's see, we have one in the Q&A that Maria will read after this one. Uh, and then that will lead us to the closeout. So first, could a phased approach be considered, uh, maybe STEM and then completely focused? So uh, let's go ahead and that, that's, that's kind of a comment as well. So uh, thinking about a phased approach and then Maria, if you can lead that last question and then Dr. Brown, if you'll respond to that, I will then work toward uh, closing us out. I think um, a phased approach definitely sounds like something uh, we would consider in the same way that we're getting our feedback in phases. Um, you know, it is, it is hard to turn a large ship and RPS is a large ship. And so um, in the same way that we're saying, you know, let's think about the theme. And then of course, we'll have conversations about actual design of the school um, and, and go further down the line implementation. Like what does that look like? So. Um, I think phases are definitely a part of how we plan on getting the school up and running. Um, our main thing is, despite, you know, what's happening right now and the conversations, is we are just excited that this is a possibility. And we spent the last 15 plus years having conversations and no action, but we feel like now we're ready for action. And so it starts now. So definitely think a phased approach is what we are taking at this point. Awesome. So our last question is, why would there be an application process if the, cho if the children live in the zone? Yep. Um, another great question. And so I didn't say we would have an application process. That was something that was thrown out as a possibility because that is something we heard about with LaGuardia. Um, you know, LaGuardia is a great example of what this could look like, but we have to kind of take this information that we're receiving and we have to RPSify it. Like we have to make it fit our community and our students. 
Um, and because we are committed to this being a school that is accessible and open to children who live in the zone, then an application process may not be the way we want to go. Um, but again, um, every part of this process um, from thinking about how do we engage our community members who live in the zone to how do we make this accessible to other students who maybe don't live in the Georgewood zone will be part of a feedback process where we're being open and transparent with our community members. So none of this is going to be a surprise. Um, we're just going to make sure that every step of the way people understand and know what we're going with. Thank you, Dr. Brown, and thank you everyone for these amazing questions. Uh, as we start to close out, I am once again dropping in the chat that survey, that online survey. Uh, would please encourage you and implore you to uh, finish and uh, you know do that so that we make sure that we get your responses. Um, and then as far as ways to stay engaged, uh, I'm also dropping in the chat our main uh, web page where you can see uh, the other opportunities for engagement sessions that we have. Tomorrow we will be on virtually again focused on STEM from 12 to 1 with Amazon Future Engineer. That session will be held in Spanish. Everyone who is on the panel will be speaking in Spanish. We will also have Spanish to English translation available. So if you are primarily an English speaker, you can still attend that session, but we will be translating from Spanish to English. And on Thursday, we will be back again with LaGuardia to hear about a couple of other sections of LaGuardia High School and hear directly from other students there. So please do join us for tomorrow and or Thursday to learn more. And then next week, we will be back to some in-person sessions. So again, that link that I just dropped in the chat, please take a look at that. That has all of the information. <clears throat> and then I also want to throw out that anybody who sees this and says, oh my goodness, I have a group, uh, a civic association, my church, uh, a neighborhood coalition, whatever it might be, if you have a group that you would like to get this information in front of, please reach out to Dr. Brown and I. I'm gonna drop my email address here in the chat. Please reach out and let us know. We will come to you. We will work long hours. We will find a way to come and ensure that we get everyone in the community to be able to weigh in on this, especially the folks who are zoned for George with and will be most impacted by this decision. Uh, additionally, you can also share uh, information with the school board by coming on Monday, uh, the first and third Monday of every month, school board meetings take place at six o'clock PM. So first and third Monday of every month at six o'clock PM. If you are unable to make it in person, you can also email speakers at rvaschools.net. That is right there in the chat as well. And that will also allow us to capture your comments for school board. And then the last thing before we close out here, and I will hand it off to our school board members to close us out. Uh, the last thing is that we are still seeking uh, feedback from families regarding rezoning. And so please do take a look at that and know that um, that web page that I just shared has more information, including a survey. So we are rezoning around River City Middle School. This is not for the entire division, but for River City Middle School, we are still closing out that process of rezoning. So please do make your voices heard there as well. And so as we close out here, and I will open up to Mrs. Gibson, Mrs. White, if you would like to close us out, my last thing will be to just say again, thank you everyone for being here and a special shout out to our partners and friends at LaGuardia High School. Your students are amazing. The work that you all did to prepare for today is evident. We wish you nothing but the best and we look forward to continuing our partnership with LaGuardia moving forward. So thank you all so much for being here. And uh, Mrs. Gibson, I'll hand it over to you. Uh, thank you so much for, for organizing this and for taking time this week. This has been incredibly insightful. I, I share your uh, thoughts in terms of the work that um, the folks in New York are doing and um, I'm very excited to hear 
how, um, how we continue to progress down this path. Thank you so much and have a great week.